So I wanted to talk a little bit about the trader's journey. And I think I sort of these trader journey things before I learned about the hero's journey. So you'll probably notice that influence in here too. And the hero's journey and the trader's journey are kind of one and the same. And maybe I'll go back and, and do some of the, the hero's journey. And I forget the guy's name. It's, it, it escapes me at the moment. If somebody knows it, let me know. And if you're not live, write it in the comments below. But anyway, he talks about the hero's journey. There's a call for adventure, and then you reach a point of no return, and then you end up back where you started after a, quite the adventure. So a trader's journey begins with a little bit of confusion, and that confusion increases, and then eventually you start reaching enlightenment. Now, what causes the confusion is you start adding indicators, and then you start adding more and more indicators. We all start with a blank chart, unless your charting package has some kind of template set up, and you just immediately click on it and start using it. But for the most part, we all start with a blank chart, and then we try to figure out what's going on, and then we think, well, we just start throwing some indicators on there, and that's going to help. By the way, indicator is derivative of price, so that's why I'm such a big price purist. Now, I do use some occasional indicators to help me out a little, mostly just a moving average. That's pretty much it, and then historical volatility for a measurement of volatility <laughs> to know how volatile stock is. Anyway, you add more and more indicators, and then at some point, you begin to study the complex and arcane, and the reoccurring theme that I see quite a bit, and it seems like this is something that Cal might be doing a little bit of, is reinventing the wheel. And I'm glad. I need to check my emails. He, um, he seems familiar. I, I seem to remember him from years back, and I think he's revisiting my stuff now, so hopefully, hopefully he's ready to simplify things and, and just follow along. But anyway, you got to be really careful when you find yourself studying the complex and arcane and reinventing the wheel. And trust me, we all do that. But if you don't go home with anything thing tonight, it's just realize that if you could minimize that, maybe just spend a year doing that, okay? Get it out of your system. Then you can come back to learn how to trade properly. And obviously, when you get stuck in that maze, you end up on a holy grail hunt, which does not exist. If somebody had the holy grail, they would own the markets. And when dealing with human emotions, like I showed earlier, whether people are getting divorced or married or buying a house or selling a house or whatever, there's no way to factor all those things in. You're not on the present, right? You can't do that. So anyway, this whole process that nearly everyone seems to go through takes about five to 30 years. And I'm not joking. I've had people email me for 20 years. Now, you know, as, as I was going live, I'm like, should I say that? That kind of makes me look like a bad teacher. But obviously, if they're still working on trading systems and never bothered to actually try mine and follow it to a T, not that I'm the grand poobah, but they're they're emailing me and asking me for help. So I assume they want to do what I'm doing. At some point, you got to get out of this maze. And, and again, I know I've got a few people that email me for over 20 years. And in some cases, I've actually literally cut them off and started giving them some tough love. And, you, and, you, and I know I'm getting older. It's like I tell my wife, it's, it's becoming like a superpower. And she's five years younger. And she's starting to understand, too. It's kind of like you don't feel like doing something. Just say no. It's like I'm becoming a crotchety old fart. But <laughs> I don't find myself doing a lot of things that I don't want to do. Family obligations aside, obviously. Hopefully my family's not watching, which they don't. <laughs> anyway, so you got to be really careful not to get stuck in that maze. And you may never come out. And if you get bored, see if you could find the grail through the maze. So at some point, you begin to remove the indicators. And as I've said many a times before, and next time somebody sends me one, I'm definitely going to screen capture it. But a lot of times people will send me a, a chart with so many indicators on it, I can't even see the, the price underneath. And, and that's how ultimate goal is to figure out what price is going to do. And the way you figure out what price is going to do is you look at price. But the true enlightenment comes when you begin to remove more and more of those indicators and you end up with a blank chart. Years ago, John Bollinger had a forum. 
And like all forums, it turns into Lord of the Flies. And, and he asked me to rejoin it a few years ago. And I think I did, but I never did get into the reading the stuff. But anyway, years ago, it was really popular with, with a lot of, a lot, a lot of people. It was kind of like the who's who of the trading world. And I was honored that John would, would, would ask me, little old me, to, to be part of his group. And like most forums, it becomes Lord of the Flies. And that was my big fear of my trading. What's uh, Dave Landry's Trend Trade? It's my Facebook group. But so far, it's been fantastic. And it's been a really good group. I think part of the reason it's a good group is we're qualified and we have similar interests and we all want to obviously make money in the market. And none of us are out there to try to look smarter than the other guy. We're all trying to accomplish the same goal. Maybe that's why it's worked so far. Knock on wood. Come in. I guess I need a new joke. <laughs> anyway, long story endless, at the bottom of his byline, or his byline, I, I guess I would say, when he posted in this forum, John would write, if you advance far enough, you arrive at the beginning. And I, and I emailed John and said, John, I really like that quote. Where'd you get that so I could, because I'd like to borrow it. And he said, well, he was watching a documentary on Albert Eiler. And uh, John's really into jazz. I tried, I tried putting on an Albert Eiler jazz station on Pandora for my office. I figured something like that would maybe be good to work with. You know, I kind of, I'm kind of a headbanger. I like all kind of music, but I'm a bit of a headbanger and I can't be cranking up Slipknot in the middle of the day. <laughs> you can only listen so much of that. Then you got to listen to something a little more mellow. But anyway, he said, based on this, uh, well, I, I just can't do it Albert Eiler. It's like a, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to describe it. It's going to be a big insult to Mr. Eiler if I try to describe it, but it's, uh, I think it's an acquired taste. Long story endless, uh, John said, well, he got it out of that uh, documentary, but the, the the genesis of it was likely a T.S. Eliot quotes, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of all exploring, we will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Well, that's your trader's journey right there. When you stop trying to overcomplicate your trading and they come up with a bunch of algorithms and all these things. And and yeah, you know, maybe Grail Hunt is a hobby on the side, but then trade something like Landry Light pullbacks and use like really simple money management. And then if you're successful with that, then by all means, knock yourself out and go on your Grail Hunt. But keep it simple is the bottom line. Curtis Faith, I get a lot of good stuff or I've gotten a lot of good stuff out of Curtis Faith. If you go to DaveLearner.com slash books dash two dash read, he's got two books there I recommend. Trading from the Guts and The Way of the Turtle. Uh, I don't want to go off that turtle tangent, but I said I would never read those books because <laughs> I thought they were dumb trying to make money off the turtles. But Faith was an actual turtle, and Faith actually gives you a lot of good insight into thinking about trading. So definitely read The Way of the Turtle. I mean, there's there's a bunch of takeaways from that book. Like one, for instance, is uh, Dennis was okay. Uh, Richard Dennis was okay with them losing money, uh, losing open profits. In other words, open profit drawdowns. And that's that's kind of a big deal. And, and it's okay to give up some of those open profits. And I'm gonna show you a trade here in a second. We gave a lot of open profits. But we still did okay longer term. And the thing about the open profit drawdown, just in case uh, he's watching, is a friend of mine from the gym, younger guy, he's getting into trading and he's looking at the prop firms. And these prop firms put these these trailing stops in on your drawdown. So let's say you're up $1,000. And if you hit $1,500 drawdown, you're out and you have to reapply for, a, for an account or, or give them more money. Let's say you go up $1,000 in a day, but you don't take those profits because you're riding that trend and then it goes back down to zero, even though net net, even let's say you make a hundred bucks, okay? Let's say net net, you're up a hundred bucks. So that's a good thing, right? Unfortunately, that $900 that came down, they bumped up your drawdown $900. Now you can only lose $600. And I could see where that would squeeze you out of a trade really quick. And I know I'm, I'm digressing, but I just want to kind of throw that in. Getting back to the simplicity of trading is, it, 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 getting back to Mr. Faith, it takes a lot of time and study before one realizes just how simple trading is. Amen. But it takes many years of failure before most traders come to grips with how hard it could be to keep things simple and not lose sight of the basics. It usually takes about five to 30 years. 